as somebody who's like just super duper sane, I don't identify with anything that was just said. <laughs> don't worry, we got you covered. Tell us a little bit about your character. Oh, thank you for asking. I play um, <laughs> Dr. Vlam. I play a character who has been alive for over 20,000 years. So she's been a lot of things. She's been a, a king, a warrior, a, a mom of 500 plus. Mm. Something she doesn't know about. <laughs> her life. Yeah. Vlam seems smart. She's an intern. You remind me of 1,200 years ago when I lived undercover with a colony of rodents. I was married to the Rat King. Ugh, oh, great lover, great cook, really flexible tail. Didn't see it coming when I slit his throat in the middle of the night and overthrew his regime. Oh, let's see. Based on your symptoms, I'd say you're preparing to molt. <laughs> Beautiful once more. <laughs> I'm excited to see how she'll disappoint us. And um, has this very interesting relationship with doctors Clack and Sleech of just complete reverence for her doctors and wants to do nothing but serve them and do a perfect, great job and has a lot of pride in what she does. I respect you both as my mentors and as I am immortal, I will be loyal to you until your inevitable death. Oh, they're brilliant, aren't they? I can feel your desire to impress them. It's overwhelming and a little scary. And her like desire to serve them is so funny because she is so much more experienced than they are in every aspect of life. Yeah, the, I would say the ego on her is uh, pretty, pretty minimal. It's so funny, yeah. Although so she's wonderful. very, very prideful. And I play Nurse Tuck, who's, uh, what do you call her, a nihilistic optimist? Uh, right. do doesn't love small talk. She loves that hospital. She'll kind of... I guess, uh, live and die and take the hits for it. She can also sort of chameleon and sort of disappear uh, willy-nilly, which helps because uh, she doesn't like some situations. She's a very uh, fun character. I think the way that Scirocco, uh had had me do her uh, ended up being sort of like uh, smiling through the sort of cynicism, which is very fun. Mm -hmm. Doctor, oh. I have asked you so many times to wear a bell. A case came in this morning that only two delusional narcissists would attempt, and lo and behold, they asked for you. Go in a fun on. way or like a weird way? I also really enjoy when I get to play Zaylorks. I'm sort of like uh, Harrison Ford, Star Wars type, <laughs> and a lot of people don't like fully see that right away, but uh, Shirako did, and so for that I'm grateful, and for the scenes of mischief uh, that Zaylorx gets into with Flam. It's good to see an old friend, Vlam. What stolen goods do you need? An unoccupied vintage bioluminescent shell from the Earth century. Of course you want me to get around an interplanetary embargo. Oh, I miss us. You also have really cute ears and a great head of hair. My ears are pretty sick in the show. Yeah. I thanks for noticing. Thanks to Robin Eisenberg uh, yeah. for those ears. What initially drew you to this script? Shiraco and I had been working together um, um, in the writer's room two seasons of Russian Doll, so I had been hearing about it a little bit in, uh, mm. over the years, and that this was really your dream project. And when you brought it to us to produce, it was so exciting because it was everything that you had sort of um, you know, fantasize, you said out loud in this room, but on steroids. Like, it's a, it was a really <laughs> complete uh, thought. So it was a, a no-brainer for uh, us to produce it and then to, to be a part of it in any way in terms of voicing characters or anything we could do to just have Shirako's vision out there. Yeah. Maya. Yes. If you ruled an alien planet, what's something you would do for mental health? Thank you for asking. This is something I want to do on our planet and I'm still trying to figure out how to do, which is making mental health and the, the issues around it not taboo in our society and making sure that we become a society that actually helps people instead of alienates people in regards to mental health and that we give access for people that do not have the support, the family, the community around them or the, or the means. It's something I think about a lot, actually, and I wish that we lived um, in a country, well, I'm not even talking planet, I'm talking country, <laughs> where our, our society benefited um, 
people with issues surrounding mental health and we need to be doing a an exponentially better job than what we're doing now so if i ruled that alien planet let me tell you honey it would not be taboo. It would be, hey, you've got a broken foot, here's a cast. You got a broken brain, here's the thing for that. And that's just part of life. Human bodies, and who knows about the alien ones, but human bodies are very complicated and not everything just comes out perfect or sometimes it gets damaged and people need help and we just need to be better at that. That's so beautifully put. I really I really agree with that. And I, I have a lot of mental illness in my family. I have thought a lot about how healthcare kind of lets you down in, in that yeah. way because it's not accessible to the people who really do need it the most. You 100%. cannot get it. And I think that was actually a part of this show and making this show in a way it's a utopic, futuristic show. And we don't ever say it, but no one ever has to pay for their healthcare mm -hmm. in this world. It's very much just expected that you get treatment. That sounds like you. And feel. as somebody who's like just super duper sane, I don't identify with anything that was just said. <laughs> don't worry, we got you covered. Clock, are you meditating? Can I put this bomb next to you? That's the least stressful question I've been asked today. Welcome to the future. It's the year 14,002, and you're in the Ergulon Galaxy. Report immediately! And window cleaners! A case came in this morning that only two delusional narcissists would attempt, and they asked for you. Go in a fun on. way or like a weird way? You have a parasite that eradicates anxiety. I heard you'll bend the rules to help people. For science, not kindness. I apologize for my visible arousal. We have a chance to cure anxiety. We have to take it. If you pursue this, you could die. Or worse, lose your licenses. Ah! I'm okay. I'm water resistant. You're such a suck up. I really admire it. Stop playing with my portal. We're doing this against my every instinct. We're putting everyone at risk. But imagine all the people it can help. I will now sing my planet's song of orgasmic death to lighten the mood. Oh.